out here today at Kiala just outside Shepparton for the Seven Sisters Festival. The Seven Sisters Festival is an all-woman event and it's all about getting back to your sacred femininity. So we've got an all-woman crew today and we're going to have to wave goodbye to our dear driver, Neil. Let's head in. So we're here chatting with Lauren and Lauren is one of the co-organisers and founders of the Seven Sisters Festival. How did it all come about, Lauren? It's um, a very interesting story. I suppose last year I'd been doing a lot of women's work myself and I'd really developed a kind of deep appreciation for the work that I'd been taught. And I was shocked as well that how little information is actually out there to relate to women's health, women's spirituality and just general well-being. And it made me recognise as well why all these ancient cultures would have women's circles where they would have the elder women and the younger women sharing together, sharing stories, sharing wisdom. Um, and there's a sense of sisterhood and community that in our modern day cultures I find is really lacking. I just had these whisperings that, oh, this, this should come about, this should happen. And the name Seven Sisters Festival, celebrating the sacred feminine came. And it just, just wouldn't leave me alone, uh, the significance and what it related to. I found out it actually relates to the Pleiades constellation and that this constellation can be seen on all seven continents and that there's an Aboriginal Dreamtime story relating to the Seven Sisters. And every culture, in fact, has a story relating to the Seven Sisters. Wow, really? Yeah, it was absolutely, yeah, <laughs> quite amazing. And I started to share the idea with a few women and they loved it and they were eager. And I, I realised that there's such a hunger amongst, yeah, the mainstream community as well to have a little bit more information, to have that sisterhood and to have that community and that connection. Stacia is a holistic healer and she took a large part in organising the opening ceremony here at Seven Sisters. Stacey, can you tell me a little bit about that process? Sure. Um, so as part of the work I do, um, I'm really passionate about um, ritual and ceremony, holding community together and that we need to bring that back into our community gatherings. Um, Lauren told me about um, the story of the Seven Sisters and how at the time she chose the name she wasn't aware that there were stories throughout the seven continents. Um, indigenous tribal stories, many different in indigenous versions in Australia that talk about the seven sisters and um, and that they are formed they form this the star constellation of Pleiades. But the story is when I read through them to get a sense of how we'll um, journey through the opening ceremony that these seven sisters came to the earth to explore the human way and particularly the way of men. And the youngest, most naive sister um, formed a bond with a man who she discovered not long after when she decided that it was time to leave that she had a spell cast upon her and she calls out for her sisters and they come and rescue her and in their fear and panic of being captured by this man they flee to the stars and they form the, their star constellation Pleiades. It's, it's amazing that there's a spot for women here because there is a place for men at this festival too isn't there? There is. Um, there are many men that have been involved in putting up the structures getting out the chainsaw, chopping firewood, making little stacks, building the fire that became part of the ceremony, all behind the scenes. There's also a little camp of men um, down the road. They're, they're around and we acknowledge that healing the sacred feminine also means healing the divine masculine because without the union of the two, we can't be whole. So we've run into Catherine today. Now Catherine is a blood witch, also known as a menstrual educator. Catherine, can you tell me what a blood witch does? I guess blood witch is who I am. Uh, menstrual education is how I deliver that to the world. Um, I've been walking a conscious menstrual path, I guess for 15 years. I learnt and taught myself how to be with the menstrual experience in a powerful 
and wise way rather than most of our culture which has it's a fairly shameful and painful place which is a is a beautiful word it means for me it just means I have no translator I have no religion mm -hmm. I am my own conduit and, and have a relationship with spirit in, in the way I choose it to be I also use witch because I believe ritual is a very big part of humanity I think we've used ritual throughout the eons to create change in our lives and ritual is a big part of the way I teach and I teach transformative education or cultural education so I don't know much about what your philosophy is but is it based along the idea that having a period is a beautiful and blessed thing mm -hmm. rather than a, than a painful thing? It's about it's recognising the menstrual experience is a gift. It's not a curse. <laughs> it never, was never meant to be a curse. It was, we're not born with shame, we learn shame. Yeah? The system is not designed to be painful. Yeah, it's actually designed to be ecstatic. And it's also designed to assist us with our emotional and mental health. If you're feeling hungry, then Kelly's the person that you want to talk to. Kelly is the kitchen coordinator here at the Seven Sisters Festival. Kelly, what kinds of food are everyone dining on here? Well, what we're doing, it's actually a communal kitchen. So what the sisters have done is um, everybody's brought along something to share. So we've had a big fridge full of things that people have donated, whether it be from their garden or they're just brought along because they thought they wanted to share, whatever they're inspired by. Amazing things come out of that kitchen, yeah, and just everybody coming together and, and doing it, working together. Share, create, collaborate, that's the, the aim of the game. Very nice. Uh, vegetarian food? Yeah, it's mostly been vegetarian, mm -hmm. um, vegan mostly. But, um, there's some vegans around who just have the um, just have honey, but yeah, we've most, it's mostly been vegan. Maybe a little bit of honey here and there. Okay. So do you believe that food, like that movie, like Water for Chocolate, the energy and your spirit can go into the food while you're cooking it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the secret ing ingredient in anything that tastes good is always love. And it's, yeah. <laughs> and there's so much love flowing in that kitchen. stumbled into the gorgeous fairy-like creature Jaquila and Jaquila was involved as the host of the opening ceremony. So what did that involve Jaquila? That involved uh, welcoming, introducing all of our amazing artists. Uh, we had a program of very powerful women uh, that nourished and empowered and really invigorated the group. And Jaquila you've travelled all the way down from Sydney to mm. attend this event. Is it a big difference from your daily life in Sydney to the outback of Victoria? I mean, I personally feel super blessed to have super sisters around me and to know what the sisterhood is all about. I feel so nourished, enriched. And so um, the sisterhood is always um, present in my life. Um, and to experience it here on a larger scale, I mean obviously this is a very different environment to um, Sydney City. Um, and when you get an environment like this, rather than being in the city and feel like you have to protect yourself somewhat from all of this discordant um, energy, you can just relax and know that you can let go and do whatever you need to do to balance and feel whole within yourself. So. Um, yeah, it's certainly a much more supportive environment for growth than we experience in the city. Yeah. Yeah, but it's, I think it's very important to cultivate the sisterhood wherever you are. Oh, thank mm. you. Thanks, Chikula. Mm. Mm. <laughs> We've had an incredible day out here in the bush and we've learnt so much about what it is to be a woman and we've spoken to some incredible people from witches to specialists on menopause to people whose passion is food. I'm Amber and this is Maha's Alternative Reality.